This is Mungo Dark Matter and welcome to Dark Matters. Today on Dark Matters I'm going to discuss uh, how to use your car as an emergency power source by using a power inverter. Now the cigarette lighter of your car puts out 12 volts and a lot of devices either come with or you can optionally get a power adapter that you can plug into the cigarette lighter. Like for instance most cell phones you can get a uh, car adapter so that you can charge the cell phone while you're driving around. Uh, the same holds true for iPods and iPads and other electronic devices. Now some of these devices may not have that accessory available and it can be pretty pricey. And for the price of a, some car adapters and some power supplies you can get what's called a power inverter. Uh, a power inverter converts the power from your cigarette lighter to make it like a standard socket in your house. And so then you can plug anything into it that has a standard uh, AC plug. Uh, the importance of this is if the power goes out, say for a few days uh, during a, a storm or something, you may be caught without power or a way to charge up your cell phone and you may really need your cell phone for communication if the power is out. So making sure your cell phone's charged up is probably a big priority in most emergencies. So a power inverter can help you do this no matter if you have the uh, car charger for your cell phone or not. And you can, you know, use it for other devices and such. The important thing to remember is read the instructions to the particular inverter and make sure you do not exceed the recommended power usage. Now the power inverter I have here is designed to take 200 continuous watts and peak wattage of 400 watts which means it can handle up to 400 watts at peaks. For example like if you have a laptop plugged in to the power inverter it's going to be running at a particular level most of the time, but if you use the CD and it starts to crank up, that's going to draw more power on the device. And many electronic devices have kind of like an idling usage and they may have peak usages depending on when they need to draw more power, depending on the device and what it's used for. So the power inverter is a uh, is a uh, good idea for being able to ensure you can charge certain things up. Now the thing you got to be careful of in addition to like you can't plug a space heater into a power inverter because a space heater uses about 1500 watts generally and this power inverter can only do 200 watts continuously and up to 400 watts. So it would blow a fuse in your car and, and it would blow a fuse probably in the power inverter. So you got to be careful with that. Make sure you follow all the instructions to the particular power inverter. Uh, this particular power inverter for instance has cooling vents on it and everything and power inverters and other electronics tend to get hot a lot of times and so you need to make sure any vent area isn't covered so that it doesn't overheat and you want to make sure you know, obviously there's nothing too close to it that might be affected by by the excess heat. Um, so uh, make sure you read the instructions. The other thing that I would warn you about is if you're using a power inverter in your car you could theoretically run an extension cord to say like a fan. A fan usually takes maybe 60 watts of uh, power so most power inverters could probably handle that. Uh, the, the problem is is you have to be careful when you're running your car because the exhaust gives off carbon monoxide and so you don't want to pull it up in your garage, run an extension to the power inverter and run a fan like if it's hot and there's no electricity because the carbon monoxide in the garage can get into the house and even if you have your car parked in certain places near your house there may be ways the carbon monoxide can get in so you've got to be very careful with that you also have to be careful with that if you had a regular generator. A lot of people go out and buy generators when there's a big kind of power 
crisis where the power is going to be out for a while and they put it in they don't follow the instructions and they put it in the wrong location and they get carbon monoxide poisoning and uh, that can kill you so you've got to be very careful with that in fact I would probably recommend uh, getting a carbon monoxide alarm you can get these little alarms that will detect carbon monoxide coming into your house not only from a generator or a car but from any other source uh, because you cannot smell or detect with your senses carbon monoxide uh, and it will uh, rob your blood of oxygen basically and you'll pass out and you can die from that so that's another caution I, I would have but the power inverter is good for charging things up and making sure you have electronic devices charged up if you need a quick charge. You could actually plug like a uh, light bulb into it, and particularly a compact fluorescent or a LED light bulb. Uh, but there are other uh, power sources you may be using for that, uh, which we'll go over in other videos. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you what the power inverter was like and uh, Make sure you read the instructions to your particular power inverter, like I said. Okay, here is the uh, power inverter sitting on the dashboard. It's got a uh, plug for the uh, cigarette lighter. And as you can see here, it's got two sockets in it that you can plug regular um, AC plugs into. This particular power inverter also has a USB port right in it problem with this particular power inverter is this cord is not very long and it actually won't reach all the way down to my cigarette lighter in this car uh, from the dashboard which is probably just as well because you probably don't want to sit it on the dashboard because the Sun will heat it up more uh, that length of cord might not be a problem in your particular vehicle depending on where you have to sit it and such but it's something to be aware of is the length of that cord and where you can set the inverter. So uh, that could be a problem for you, or it might not be. As I said, this particular power inverter will do up to 200 watts continuously with peaks of 400 watts. So you could run a TV set uh, or a computer or, or charge pretty much anything with a power inverter like this and uh, it's a good uh, piece of emergency equipment to have around. I'm Mungo Dark Matter and this has been Dark Matters and whatever you do enjoy using technology.